SpaceX's explosive orbital test flight of the Starship spacecraft, the most powerful rocket ever built, left a huge mark on the surroundings, scouring a massive crater in the ground, sending particulate matter flying for miles, far beyond the expected debris field. Without any significant diversion measures in place, Starship's Super Heavy Booster tore through the company's prepared concrete launch pad, kicking up heavy debris. The incident was so violent, it's caught the attention of the FAA, which has grounded Starship till it can conclude its mishap investigation. Signs that SpaceX may have additional hurdles to overcome before it can get Starship orbital a second time. While SpaceX is doing its best to solve this problem, there is a solution that would certainly work better in the future, the sea launch. How an offshore spaceport would be better for Starship? Let's talk about it right here in today's episode of Alpha Tech. Well, it's not my idea. SpaceX has thought of this, and they even started it. The SpaceX oil rig purchase publicly uncovered in January of 2021. The Phobos deck was half cleared and a fitful burst of work. But sadly, earlier this year, President and COO Gwen Shotwell says SpaceX has temporarily abandoned plans for the floating Starship launch platform to assure it's fully focused on getting flight experience with the next-generation rocket. However, she was still confident that sea-based launch platforms would become a crucial asset in the future. This has become more certain after Starship's latest launch. So, why the need to launch from a platform floating on water instead of using good old solid land? Elon Musk even said the launches and landings had to be far enough away that they wouldn't bother heavy populated areas. The company's plan to eventually carry out up to three launches and landings per day would certainly necessitate putting some serious distance between the launch site and people. Most of us could only handle about one sonic boom a month, if that. A wide no-fly zone and road closures could go into effect on launch days, and if starships do eventually shuttle people around Earth or beyond on a daily basis, the takeoff and landing points would have to be conveniently located. Going a few miles offshore is likely better in this regard than looking for a huge empty swath of land in, say, New Mexico or Nevada. Rather than building the launch pads from scratch, it's possible SpaceX would refurbish existing oil rigs. The bigger rigs are about the size of two football fields, and there's plenty of them in the Gulf of Mexico, though only a couple that are very near Brownsville. There's something inherently appealing about a plan of converting oil rigs, symbols of an industry doomed to decline, into bustling spaceports, which invoke visions of a futuristic era of easy space travel to the moon or Mars. Whether that dream is realistic is another story. But how feasible is SpaceX's goal of offshore launch pads, and how might it get done? Well, as it turns out, the idea of spinning offshore oil rigs into spaceports is not new. From the 1960s up through the 80s, the Luigi Broglio Space Center launched payloads into space from a converted oil platform off the coast of Kenya. The multinational company Sea Launch converted the mobile drilling rig Odyssey into a launch platform in 1997, Dozens of rockets have blasted payloads to space from Odyssey, along with a few failed launches. Florida's Department of Commerce considered creating floating spaceports on offshore rigs in 1989, but ultimately decided the approach is too costly in the short run to service the anticipated market. In 1996, a study published by IEEE Spectrum recommended that Russia marry its agile Soviet rocket design with the best oil platform technology and providing altogether a new means of getting big satellites into orbit. Ala Poznakova, a professor of law at the Scandinavian Institute of Maritime Law, had extensively researched sea-based launch facilities as well as the legal and technological implications. What's really new in SpaceX projects, she said in an email, is that all other projects launch small satellites into orbit and some suborbital objects. Meanwhile, SpaceX is planning to eventually launch missions to the moon, Mars, and into hypersonic orbit around Earth, which would carry humans which is quite different from earlier projects, Poznakova said. 
SpaceX currently uses on-land launch pads at Cape Canaveral, Florida, Lompoc, California, and Boca Chica, Texas, though which perform many landings of the reusable boosters at sea on drone ships. The company is now in the process of developing a new super heavy lift spacecraft called Starship. Early prototypes of the vehicle have completed test flights at the facilities in Boca Chica, not far from Brownsville. SpaceX envisions loading up future iterations of Starship with cargo and passengers that could travel to Earth orbit, the Moon, and Mars. If this tantalizing dream were to ever become reality, it would reshape the space sector in myriads of ways, including causing disturbance and noise around busy Starship spaceports with cacophonous liftoffs and sonic booms from returning spacecraft. For this reason, among others, SpaceX is experimenting with less disruptive offshore launches and landings. Obviously, launching on the water can provide strategic advantages to include minimizing public safety risk, air traffic interference, limiting noise and nuisance to surrounding communities, and more, said Sarah Langston, assistant professor of spaceflight operations at Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University, in an email. Poznikova pointed out that mobile oil rigs also are easily moved to a new location and tailored to the need of the space mission. While she cautioned she's not an expert in how to convert an offshore oil platform into a spaceport, she said that oil rigs already possess characteristics necessary for a launch from sea. They may float or are even self-propelled and are even built to be stable on the water, Poznikova said. However, they must have a system which allows stabilizing the platform for launch. They'd also need to have support vessels, I would presume, to ensure initiating the control of the launch. Someone needs to push the button, and it can't be done in the immediate proximity to the launch rig. Because SpaceX vehicles are partially reusable, the spaceport might also accommodate landings, which might add another layer of complexity to the company's plans to retrofit the rigs. This aligns with SpaceX's long-term goals, perhaps even exceeding CEO Elon Musk's infamously lofty ambitions. Shotwell said SpaceX has, quote, designed Starship to be as much like aircraft operations as we can possibly get in the hopes of enabling dozens of launches a day, if not hundreds of launches a day. No rocket family in history has launched more than 61 times in a calendar year, making Shotwell's Starship cadence targeting hundreds or even thousands of times more ambitious than a 1980s rocket record that's still standing four decades later. Dozens to hundreds of Starship launches per day would have two or three orders of magnitude beyond the highest cadence the FAA has ever permitted. Shotwell's continued interest in floating platforms is thus unsurprising, as they may be the only way SpaceX can realistically achieve airline-like Starship operations while still coexisting with U.S. regulators. In essence, SpaceX has made huge gambles on the assumption that a version of Starship mostly resembling what the company's building today would be highly successful, reusable, and reliable. SpaceX's success with Falcon 9, Falcon Heavy, Dragon, and suborbital Starship testing suggests it would be ultimately successful in time. Nonetheless, Shotwell's apparent desire to conduct orbital Starship launches and gather data before making major investments in new infrastructure and hopefully big design changes and optimizations is a welcoming change of pace. And that about wraps it up for today's episode. Don't forget, share your ideas in the comments section below. Your support motivates us to create more quality videos. And for that, we thank you so much and hope to see you next time.